All right, sports fans, now we're getting in a totally different area. Uh, even though it's kind of in the same area, we're going to do uh, some diagnostic scanning with uh, with my code scanner. And, yeah, you can go to the auto parts store. They'll scan stuff for you for free. But, uh, holy cow, it is much more convenient to have your own. And when I bought this unit, it was about 200 bucks. I probably bought it about four years ago, and... Maybe even more. And I've used it so many times uh, per use. I've got this down. Uh, costing less money than a lot of tools you buy. I know it's hard to bite the bullet and uh, and spend that much on something you don't use that often. But, uh, boy, if you're in a situation where you're thinking you're going to increase how much you work on cars, if you enjoy doing it, and going to start working on your buddies' cars and things, and, or have a number of vehicles yourself, uh, it's worth every penny to get a good, don't get a cheap one, get get a good one, spend about 200 bucks, it'll be well worth it, a uh, year later you aren't going to care that you spent 200 bucks instead of 50, but holy cow does it make a difference in what you can do with it, just for instance, this uh, scans, this particular unit scans uh, your ABS codes, and that's what we need to be doing right here, right now. Alright, these things are easy enough to use, it's OBD2, they call it, Onboard Diagnostics 2, and uh, they're the same for all vehicles, so that's kind of cool. That were made after, I think, 1996, I believe it is, because my 1995 Honda does not have OBD2. It has the old style where you just jump across uh, uh, two leads that come out. But uh, basically, you just plug in somewhere underneath the dash. What we got to do is we got to stick the key in the ignition and turn it on. All right, so our key's into the ignition. It says no powertrain DTCs, which are, I think, uh, data codes is what that is. But uh, we're not worried about engine codes. We're worried about ABS codes. And uh, this has been throwing ABS codes intermittently. It's not showing them on the dash right now, but uh, it does show it when you drive. So what we will do here is we're going to uh, press the S button, or that's what leaves us, it looks like an S to me, and that'll get us to... Uh, our uh, ABS codes. See, there it is. And then we're going to go down one to get to ABS. Okay, now it's at ABS. I did quite a bit of talking there with my camera, not on record. At any rate, I pressed a bunch of buttons on this. I don't use these every day, so I was doing it very inefficiently. Uh, Probably wasn't worth videoing in any way. But, you know, you can struggle through it. These things are pretty easy to use, uh, these code scanners. In fact, they're so easy to use, they really don't have much for instructions. But you struggle through it for a little bit. It took me about a minute uh, to get it up. And fortunately, it is the right uh, front wheel speed sensor that is bad. And that's what we have taken apart. Uh, so we'll get a new uh, right front wheel speed sensor when we get a new bearing at the auto parts store. Now, my only concern is, is maybe it's throwing that code because... Uh, I have the thing taken apart right now, the right side, but I don't think so because it's not even showing any ABS codes on the dash. It will intermittently uh, back when it was put together and, and running. So I will put on a new ABS sensor, and uh, it almost makes you wonder if it's making it throw that code because that bearing's bad, too, because the ABS sensor goes right into the bearing. Um, I'm not in the mood to uh, have things, so I think they're fairly inexpensive. I'm just going to buy an ABS sensor. I also think they're the same left and right. And that way I have one on hand if one goes out again. I've had one go out before, so it's a fairly common thing for these things to go out. So we'll put it back together. We'll put the new ABS sensor in, and if we're lucky, that will make the ABS light go out, and we will have this front wheel bearing fixed and all in one crack. So off to the auto parts store we go. Alright, <clears throat> I got my new part, and so I decided to start cleaning up the old part, and when I used a chisel to separate the uh, bearing hub assembly from the steering knuckle, uh, well, kind of boogered up just a little bit, not not bad, Just so I just took a die grinder and I just very lightly took off the little bit of a deformed metal. It's quite easy to do, and then I realized, uh, hey, this here, this uh, steering knuckle, this is aluminum on this, so we've got to be a little bit careful. Um, there is a certain amount of uh, erosion in there, so I'm just going to carefully scrape that out without uh, 
gouging up that aluminum. Oh, there's some uh, white colored corrosion here, like there so often is when aluminum is uh, touching steel. So I'll just kind of scrape that off as best we can. And then I will very lightly sand this up with some emery cloth. But be very careful not to remove the material just to get it clean because you do not want to increase the diameter of this bore here. Uh, you want to have a tight fit there. So I'm going to shut the camera off and scrape away and uh, get that cleaned up so we can get the bearing put in. All right, let's take a look and see where we're at here. Um, as you can see, the or might not be able to see, depending on how well that comes in focus. The threads were the nut. Anything that wasn't covered by the nut pretty much just rusted off, but it doesn't really make any difference. You don't use those threads anyway. Um, in this bore here, inside this bore here, there's a certain amount of corrosion. Now, I did my best to scrape that off, and I lightly uh, sanded it up with some emery cloth. Now, I didn't go overboard on that. Same thing here, I cleaned this up with some emery cloth. Um, where the corrosion was, it actually tends to, instead of usually when you have corrosion like on steel, it'll be pits and it'll be depressions. Well here it almost seems to be standing proud of uh, the machine surface. But uh, I don't want to try and sand that away because aluminum oxide, which is the corrosion on aluminum, it's aluminum oxide, that's, that's a very hard material, but aluminum is a very soft material. So if I try to get rid of that, all that corrosion, uh, get it to shiny metal. I'm certain I will uh, take off too much material of the steering knuckle. So I'm just going to get it as clean as I can, you know, clean enough. I'm not going to go nuts on it because I don't want to remove material. Same thing here with this mounting flange. I cleaned it up, but I didn't go, I didn't try to make this shiny bare metal everywhere where I didn't want to easily become that way because I, I don't want to take off material. So I just pretty much lightly uh, sanded that with some emery cloth. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, install my bearing. I'm going to put grease on this hub, or actually this axle, where it goes through the hub, and I'm going to put anti-seize compound in this bore where the uh, bearing goes in. And I'm going to hope that the bolts draw it up all nice, even though, like I say, that corrosion does seem to stand a little proud when I put my finger on it. I'm just going to take my chances on that and hope it all it all goes together nicely. Um, there did seem to be some factory sealant here, like some silicone sealant, but it didn't do a very good job because there's plenty of corrosion in there, so I'm not going to worry about that. I've watched, I watched another video here where a Ford technician does it, and he didn't put any sealant on there, so I'm just going to put her together, and uh, we'll see how things go from there. All right, so I'll coat this bore here with anti-seize compound. Sure, it's everywhere on there. I gotta put grease on my axle. I'm not worried about if I get a little bit of anti seize compound on the axle. And likewise, I'm not worried if I get a little bit of grease in that bore. I don't think it's gonna hurt anything. We just wanna make sure we get everything coated. So, because when you have two unlike metals, in this case aluminum and uh, probably that hub is made out of cast iron, you're gonna get. Uh, Electrolytic rusting. Uh, say, unlike metals touching each other tend to rust even more than just uh, similar metals touching each other. Uh, electrolysis type process. But uh, that ought to keep that bearing from seizing in there and prevent some oxidation there. Now I'm going to put a little bit of grease on the spline on that shaft. I could probably just as easily use uh, anti-seize compound on that shaft and I actually got some on there by bumping it anyway, but boy, the more you can make it so things come apart, if you ever have to take them apart, the better it is. And uh, probably put some anti-seize compound on those threads too. I'll probably do that though after I uh, get the hub put on. Now here's our hub. And the only thing we have to worry about is that we have the interlock brake the sensor, the wheel speed sensor in the correct orientation. 
And uh, to where it was when we took it apart. Do that and a quick check on my camera there and see exactly what the orientation was. I'm certain it was in the back. All right, that was probably well worth my time. Now I can put this back together with confidence. The analog brake sensor pretty much faces the rear. So we'll get this hub put on. Hopefully, get around the axle shaft. There we go. Now it's somewhat aligned here. It looks like it's going in. Oh yeah, it goes in quite ni nicely. Um, I guess at this point I can say to you, uh, you don't have to worry too much about uh, removing too much material from the inside because uh, it seems like all the alignment is either on that chamfer at the edge of that uh, bore or where the bolts actually go through. So that is kind of some good news there. It'll make you a little bit less apprehensive when you're cleaning it up. Um, came in handy having me look at my uh, camera here because what I filmed so far uh, analog brake sensor does face the rear of the vehicle. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the bolts in and hold this hub on. And they did supply us with uh, new bolts. I just got done watching a video and they said, uh, he said that the torque spec for these bolts that go on the back was uh, 90 pounds. So that's what we'll torque them to. These here are our bolts that uh, are for uh, holding on our hub and bearing assembly and I don't know if you can see that or not but they do seem to have some amount of uh, Loctite on them to begin with. Um, I'm going to put some blue Loctite on them too because Loctite also does prevent uh, them from rusting in um, and really the only reason I'm doing that, putting the Loctite on is because making a video here. If I wasn't videoing this, like just doing this by myself, I'd put ANIC's compound on these bolts, but that's not the way they say you're supposed to do it. It's just that in my lifetime, I've had a lot more instances where something is rusted together and you cannot get it apart than where something worked its way loose. I've never had anything like this work its way loose in my life. Um, there's not a whole lot of clearance to get these bolts in. So that's going to make torquing kind of difficult, getting into torque specs. But we'll work with it. We'll get our bolts in here. Blue Loctite really isn't doesn't make it all that hard to take apart so we'll just use the blue Loctite and get some bolts started here. I will probably have to turn this wheel once I start tightening these bolts up, but let's see if we can get them started. Okay. The two lower ones started relatively easily. And some amount of trouble getting the top one going. I bet what is causing my problem is the suspension is drooping which puts this axle at a little bit of an angle which makes it hard to get this bolt through this hole. I bet that's where my problem lies. Fortunately I was able to kind of thread it in there with, with my ratchet wrench. Threading it halfway easily. Get 
yeah, she's going through. It actually draws up fairly nicely. 